The art of selling, is it an art or is it a science? Maybe a little bo of both. The art slash science of selling, tough enough in normal times, but it turns into even more of a challenge during the bad. Our next guest is popularly known as the professor of professional selling, was named by the speakers group as one of the top business speakers you need to get to know this year. And in the interest of public service, we're doing just that. Neil Rackham is the creator of the Spin Selling Concept and author of books on the very same theme. Neil, welcome to the program. What's so special about selling? All you have to do is build a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door, no? Well, you know, Bernie, that's the old business theory. Build a better mousetrap and people will come. But what happens if your mousetrap is just one of 30 different mousetraps? The reality of the world we live in today is your mousetrap, frankly, isn't that different from a competitor's mousetrap. It doesn't have value enough to, to get the sale for you. And so mm -hmm. the dilemma of selling today is selling a, at a time where the better mousetrap theory has sort of reached the end of its life cycle. I've got an easy solution to that. If I'm making a simple mousetrap like 29 other people out there, all I have to do is undercut them and make sure that I'm cheaper than anybody else, tack on a money-back guarantee, and I've got it made. Well, that's one way. One, and, and in fact, the world's dichotomizing. One way to handle this is, okay, I'll make cheap, easy to do business, no frills offerings. And well, I'll undercut my competition, and I won't sell through a direct sales force anymore. That's much too expensive. I'll go to the internet, I'll go to telesales, cheaper distribution. That's the way you can make business. But there's another way too. And that way is to say, my mousetrap hasn't got enough value in it to make it different from other mousetraps. And so the way I sell it will become more important than what I'm selling. I need mm -hmm. to add a lot of value during the sales process. So in aggregate, the value of how I sell plus my mousetrap is enough to get me the business. What is the first tenet? What is the first part of this philosophy then? Because presumably you're not saying spend a bomb more money on R&D to add more springs to it or necessarily making it better. It's the whole process of getting it into the user's hands. So what's the first thing that you need to do that most people make a big boo-boo on? Well, I suppose the first thing you need to understand is that the sales process is going to contribute a lot of the value today. You see, in the end, the mousetrap, in most cases, is just a tool to help people solve problems. And it's the understanding of the problems, the analysis, the positioning of a solution that's become more and more important in selling today. So high-level selling treats products just as, as tools to solve customer problems. That's the central issue in selling today. What is the, um, what, what do you need to appeal to? Do you appeal to a different set of emotions in an environment like we have today versus during the heyday when everybody was making money hand over fist. You want to appeal to a different dimension in, in the human personae. Well, I, I think there is a different appeal. In the old days, when things were good, talking brochures could be very successful. They, they could just come along and talk up the product and they could get business. Now you, you are in a situation where people are looking for value. They're, they're looking for safety. They're looking for making decisions that have durability. And so there are different buttons and different appeals. Now, most people in selling think it's uh, largely an issue of price because that's what their customers tell them. But, you know, history shows that the most successful companies selling in recession were never the ones that cut their prices. They were the ones that sold safety. They had a safe brand. Look at IBM the most successful company in the 1980s when they were overpriced and underfeatured. You know what their great marketing slogan was? I'm sure many people will remember this. No one ever got fired for choosing IBM. They sold safety. And, and that's what appeals in hard times. That's a very good point there. Uh, your reputation and longevity can go a long, long way. Let me bring in, uh, Neil, my good friend Ed Murner from Atlantis Investment Research out of Japan today. Ed, have you changed the way 
I mean, I, I mean I, I'm sure you'd like to just manage a fund and look at value out there, but you do have to market yourself because there are a lot of people that do a lot of what you do out there. Have you changed your technique at all, uh, having uh, listened into my, the conversation I've been having with Neil? Yeah, we have to do a lot more marketing. We have to prepare better. We have to have more material. Uh, we, have to, it's, we have to be more sophisticated. The material has to be more sophisticated. We have to, have more, we have to spend more time preparing the material. Um, it, it's, a, it's a new type of market. Um, it's a tougher market, and maybe in some ways it's a better market because uh, y y the people who are investing know what they're doing more than in the old days. So it, it's changed, changed a lot. Ed, I'm going to yeah, give you a free tip here, courtesy of Neil. Ask mm -hmm. him something, and uh, ask uh, Neil Rackham something while you've got another minute or two. Well, how can fund managers uh, attract more customers? That's what I ask you. Of course, you could say by better performance. Uh, we're always striving, mm -hmm. all fund managers are striving for a better performance all the time. But how can we attract more customers? That's the, the question I'd ask you. <laughs> ah, no. Now, this, this could be very costly advice, you understand. Ed. <laughs> but let me, let, let, let me just talk about some of the things that work when times are hard. One of the things I'm seeing happening, not, not just in your area of business, but across the whole business spectrum, is when times are hard, people become much more active. They sort of knock on more doors. They try and open up more opportunities. I see this happening with funds all over the place. You know, let's, let's go out and sell a bit harder. That doesn't seem to work. If you look at the most successful companies and the most successful individuals in hard times, they sell to fewer opportunities, not to more. They choose their winners and they overinvest in them. Overinvesting in, in the best opportunities, going in, really getting in depth with your customer, that's, that's what seems to matter. And you outsell the competition by investing more in the opportunity with, with that client. Great advice. Neil, I'm going to collect a check from Ed and I'll post it to you by speed post ASAP. Great having you on the show with us. <laughs> Neil Rackham, the professor of professional selling.